Hi everybody, besides variables, there's one more thing you'll be using a whole lot in the code you write, and that thing is something known as functions. And in this video, you're going to learn all about them. So let's get started. So far, all the code we've written really contained no structure. It was just there, kind of like this alert statement. Now there's nothing wrong with having code like this. This is especially true if your code is made up of a single statement. Most of the time though, that will never be the case. Your code will rarely be this simple when you're using JavaScript in the real world for real worldy things. So a couple of days ago, I happened to see the movie Interstellar. So our real worldy example will be kind of based on that. So let's go ahead and say that you have a spaceship and it looks just like the same one that Matthew McConaughey used in the movie. And this spaceship is currently moving through space. And what we want to do is figure out what the distance it actually traveled. So if you remember back to what you might have learned in physics in school many years ago, the, there's a very simple equation for calculating distance, and that is multiply the speed by the time. So here's our problem. We want to calculate distance given speed and time. So let's go ahead and see what this would look like in JavaScript. So I'm going to go ahead and delete my alert statement. I'm going to create a variable called speed, give it a value of 10, just making up a number. I'm going to create another variable called time and give it a value of 5. And if I want to display the distance, I would just multiply it. Multiply speed by the time using the star character, which is the what you use in JavaScript to indicate multiplication of two values. So great. So I have my speed, I have my time, I'm multiplying it. If I were to run this application, as you would expect, you will see the number 50 appearing. Pretty simple. So now what I have is a very, very simple example of two variables being multiplied and getting something displayed. Now, let's say we want to calculate the distance for more things. For example, there are many spaceships that you want to calculate the distance for, and having just one set of speed and time is probably not adequate. So let me go ahead and declare a few more variables. So to keep the variables from colliding with each other, I'm going to call this one speed1. One. Let's give it a speed value of 50, and let's say it traveled for 2, whatever unit of measurement you want to use, and time2 actually. And let's go ahead and display the alert for this particular one. And if I run this application right now, you will see two alert statements come up. The first alert statement will be for the first instance of speed and time, and the second alert statement will be for speed one and time one, if I can get the, get the numbers and things straight. And you'll see that as well, 50 and 100. So at this point, what we have is two examples of calculating the distance, each with a lot of duplicated effort. See, right now, if I want, let's say I want to add a few more examples. Let's say I want to do, let's say another spaceship gets added in. And as you can see, this kind of starts getting really unwieldy because at this point, now I have more duplicate functionality. I'm just going to be doing some minor touch-up work to make sure these variables are unique, which is terrible, boring, and no one really wants to do this. And now I have a third spaceship for whom I'm calculating the distance for. This is terrible. So to help make all these things a little bit more sane, you have what are known as functions, the stars of this particular video. So a function is really designed to do two things. It helps group statements together, and it makes your code reusable. If this sounds a lot like variables, it's true. There's a lot of overlap between them. In many ways, they're probably distant cousins. They just don't know that yet. So what we're going to do is this. So here's what we're going to do. The best way to learn about functions is to just start writing them. And we will start with a very simple function and then gradually add some more detail till you get to the point where you know enough about functions to be very productive as you're building your real world apps. So what I wanna do is create a function that kind of simplifies calculating a distance for various things. So first of all, the way you declare a function, it's pretty simple. You declare a function by using the function keyword. So I'm gonna type in F-U-N-C-T-I-O-N, spell the word function. And once you have the function keyword, the next thing you specify is the name of your function, the identifier. So for this one, I'm going to call this one show distance. And here's where some of the syntax you're going to see is very unique to the language you're learning, in this case, JavaScript. So I have the show distance identifier. And what I'm going to have next are the open parentheses and close parentheses. These actually serve a very valuable purpose, and you'll see that in a few moments. But for now, just know that you need to provide them as part of declaring your function. And next, you also have to make designate the beginning and ending of your function. And in JavaScript, that is done by using the open and close brackets. These open and close brackets kind of indicate where a statement block 
really ends and starts. So you need to have that. And I don't have a good explanation as to why that is the case, but it is part of the syntax and just some of the things you need to remember as part of declaring and using various things in JavaScript. So I have my function, it's called show distance, and it currently exists. So right now though, this function isn't really doing much. What a function does, like I mentioned earlier, is it helps group statements together. I'm gonna declare a variable, var speed, and give it a value of let's say 10. Let's declare, let's declare another variable, var time, and give it a value of five. And next, let's go ahead and just display the alert statement, the same one you saw earlier, speed times time, and this returns to you our distance value. So right now our function has been declared. It contains some statements that are now grouped inside of it. All that really remains is to actually call this function. So the way you call a function is by using the name you gave it, in our case it's show distance, and then providing the open and close parentheses just as they're provided right here. Now you will see us changing the function call in a little bit, but for now, for this particular example, you're in good shape, that's all you have to do. So let's go and preview this application to see what it looks like. As you can imagine, the show distance function gets called because that's what you're specifying as a function to get called. And this function does a simple multiplication of the speed and time variables and returns it in the alert statement, which is going to display 50 on your screen. So that is pretty straightforward. Now the nice thing is, if I want to call the show distance function several more times, I just copy and paste this code a few more times. In this case, I have three statements called show distance, duplicate in each one. And if we were to test my application, you'd see the first call to show distance, second call to show distance, and the third call to show distance, each of them represented by the alert statement that comes up. So that's pretty cool. Or really, is it cool? The thing is, this example is pretty straightforward in that it is hard coded. I'm calling the show distance function, it's displaying speed and time. Now, if I wanna display like I did earlier, I wanna calculate the values of three different spaceships. And what I really don't wanna do is go back to the same mistakes I made earlier. I don't wanna have to copy the show distance function several times, call this one show distance one, show distance two, and then make some changes to the values to see different things inside there. That kind of defeats the, defeats the purpose. So what we're gonna do is look at the next part about learning with functions, and that is working with what are known as arguments. So a function doesn't have to be very self-contained like it is right here. You can actually pass some data in that just helps it to behave slightly differently depending on what you're doing. So what we wanna do is call the show distance function, but instead of speed and time being hard-coded, I wanna pass that in to help this function work. And the way you do that is by specifying the arguments, the values that will identify the data you pass in, in between the open and closed parentheses as part of giving your function its name. So I'm gonna type in the value speed and time. At this point, I now have my show distance function. It takes two arguments, speed separated by a comma, the second argument, the value time. And what I'm displaying in my alert statement is the same as before, the multiplication of these two values put together. Now to call this function, I type in show distance just like I did before, but instead of leaving what goes inside the open and close parentheses blank, I'm gonna substitute the values that map to the actual arguments I need. So I'm gonna specify 10, comma, five, which maps to speed, comma, time. 10 is the speed, five is the time. If I were to run my application now, you'll see the same result as before, except it's now a little bit more customized. 50 shows up. If I wanna call my show distance function again with different values, just do, the, just do what you did before. Show distance, this time it'll be 12 and 10. If I were to test my application, okay, it's 12 and 10. If I were to test my application, you'll see 50 showing up for the first show distance call, and then 120 showing up for the second call. So that is pretty neat. So we're actually almost towards the end of learning about functions. The very last thing I'm gonna do is talk about functions that actually return some data. So this function right here is very unique in that it does everything it needs inside of it, and that's that. In many cases though, your functions will be a little bit more of a helper accessory. They will do some calculations, they will do a lot of you know number crunching or whatever they do, and they will return the results of what they do back to whatever called it. That probably makes very little sense. Let's go ahead and just take a look at an example of what I'm referring to. So what I wanna do is instead of having the alert statement show up in my screen when show distance is called, I wanna store the value in another variable as part of calling show distance. So I'm gonna first rename this function just for kicks. I'm gonna call this one get distance. 
Notice that you can rename a function and as long as you're calling it with its new name, the functionality inside the function just stays untouched. And instead of having alert speed times time, I'm gonna use a new keyword, it's called return. And what return does is it takes whatever value it currently you're trying to return and sends it back to whatever called the function. So in this case, I'm returning the value that is the multiplication of speed times time. And what I'm gonna return it to is the variable that's going to be storing this value. So I have var distance, new variable I'm creating, and I'm gonna initialize it to the result of calling get distance with a value of 10 and five. So in this case, when distance is called, you're gonna multiply the 10 and the five, and it's gonna return that value to the distance variable. So let me do an alert on the distance variable, and you'll see exactly what's going on here. Bam, 50 shows up, no surprise there. Now, so the thing to know about the return statement is that it returns the value, that's one of its jobs. The other thing is it exits the function immediately once this line gets hit. So what I can do is I can have an alert statement here. Let's say alert, um, I don't wanna spoil the movie, so I'm not gonna make anything movie related. So I'm gonna say no spoilers here. And if I were to test my application right now, you'll see return statement of 50 getting displayed, but this alert never comes up. And the reason is the return statement is also an exit statement. It exits your function almost immediately. So let me go and kill the preview for a second. And let's take a look at the opposite of it, where the alert statement goes above the return statement, in which case you will now see the alert no spoilers here first and then you'll see the result of the, of the function getting called and stored by distance variable and showing that value, which is 50. Sweet. So with that, we are done with our look at functions. So if you wanna learn more about functions, go to crypto.com and search for the keyword functions. There are a lot of articles you'll see about not just functions by themselves, but functions as they're used in various other applications and various other concepts that you'll be learning. So functions are one of those fundamental things that you'll see over and over again as we move as we move on. If you need any help, you can either post in the comments on any of the functions tutorials or post in the forums itself, forum.group.com, where I or anyone else will happily be able to help you out. And if you wanna ping me directly, you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. And finally, if you found this particular topic and how it was explained awesome, you will totally like my book, JS101, JavaScript for Beginners. It's available on Amazon in paperback and Kindle editions. So with that, I will see you guys later.